to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm Coach Caroline, and I'm here with Coach Valerie. And Coach, I want to talk to you about running groups. Um, we've talked about this before. Uh, I've run with running groups. I've had running friends that I got up at five in the morning. I don't know. It was ludicrous for like four and a half years, guys. I did not have to be at work by a certain time. Like I think I had to be at work by like nine. So I was literally getting up four hours <laughs> before I had to go anywhere. There was a period of time where I'd get up, go running, come home, sleep for an hour, and then get up and get ready for work. Um, but I did it for the camaraderie and I did it for the accountability. When you start learning this new method, though, it suddenly becomes harder because people now, they don't want to drill. They don't want to do what I'm doing. They don't, they don't, they just want to mindlessly go out there and shuffle through their miles. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you help me with that from a mindset standpoint? Well, that's a great question. I used to kind of joke with people and say, when you first start Runner X, you might have to just meet your friends for coffee after, after. the run. <laughs> Because here's the challenge, and we see this all the time. Here you come into the program, and you're starting to feel it and believe it. Well, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to share that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're going back to your group, and you're like, hey, guys, let's do this warm-up. Let's do these drills. And they're not in the same group. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I don't want to do these drills. I don't right. want to do and, you know. And so then it's like you have a couple of options. I tell people, here's a couple of options. So one is... Do your drills and your warm-up and everything on your own. Yeah. And if you just love running with your group, then do the running part with your group. And then do your own private skills, strength, and self-care. Right. And you'll find, by the way, and this is nothing against being with a group, but I want to ask you this. When you're running, are you listening? Are you, you can be one of two people or maybe three, but you're either the runner that's listening to someone else. Right. Like they're dumping on you. As a friend, nothing personal, but just lots of talking in your ear. Or are you the one talking? Right. Because here's the challenge. If we're all talking, not about the running, but just talking, you're not running. Yeah. You're not focused on running. You're focused on the conversation. So I am not telling you that it's a wrong thing to do. Okay. But while you're learning, while you're really connecting with your run, that chatter is actually impeding your running. Yeah. So is listening to music, by the way. So is listening to a podcast while you run. Mm -hmm. You're truly not running because running is free falling. And running is connecting with your mind and your body. Like truly running should be a solo activity, but can be done within a group. Mm -hmm. So meaning, can you go to your group run and just run and just be part of the group, but you're running? Or are people like, oh, are you okay? You're not talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So just keep that in mind. Like I... It's amazing the joy you will find when you connect with what running is. And by the way, I can talk all day, right? I'm the group leader. I love to talk. But when I'm running, honestly, guys, I want to run. I want to find my fall point. I really enjoy running. So after I've gotten to the point, we've talked about this before, where you are able to focus on your run, you're, you're going out, you're doing your 5 or 10 miles, whatever you're doing that week, and I want to go run with my group, and I feel that I can be strong and be the oddball and be in the middle of the pack wherever I am and not talk and focus. Um, you know, it's not that you oppose to that. It's like just you just want us to be present in your with, practice. In your practice. But if there's a day when I just want to vent about my boss, so I want to go out with my best girlfriends and I just want to bitch for an hour and a half. You have no problem with that either. No, that's to go for it. Right. But if I come back and say <laughs> my knee hurts. Right. I ran an hour and a half bitching about my boss <laughs> with my girlfriends. Um, what do I do? Then it's going to be like, well, that's because you, were you weren't being mindful. And I'm going to put this to, I do this a lot with, and I'm not going to say weight, but with, let's talk about diet. If I wanted to go vegan, if I suddenly found out that I was, I needed, I had soleus, something was happening with my, with my intestines and I could not eat pasta or whatever gluten anymore because it was seriously affecting me. AKA I'm running and it's seriously affecting my knees or it's seriously affecting my hips. If I had something with my, with my weight or with my, my diet, 
I wouldn't then go to a pasta bar with my friends. Or if I did, I'd be like, okay, guys, but I'm just going to eat. I'm going to eat. Is there something on the menu I can eat? Right? right. And my friends are hopefully going to be respectful of that. We have to realize that, that, that your friends, if they're really your friends, are going to be respectful of the fact that, I, okay, I'm going to meet you after for coffee. Or let's just, let's go on Saturday and I'll meet you after our long runs and we'll talk after over pancakes. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's like, we're afraid to say that to our running friends. We're afraid of being, um, not part of that group. But right. if you seriously had an impediment where you couldn't eat with them or you couldn't drink with them because it had a bad effect, the effect on you, you wouldn't do it. Right. But you'd still go to the happy hour and just have something else. Well, right? so but, and then they wouldn't make you feel guilty. That's right. the other thing. So, and if they right. did try, this is, this is where I kind of want to shift your mindset about yourself is that if you did, go to the happy hour and somebody said why aren't you drinking have a glass of wine and you said no i've decided it it hurts my sleep or whatever i don't know in this day and age there's many people that would really shame you into drinking (laughs) okay i don't even remember that as a high school and maybe i'm wrong guys you can you can email me and say no i have friends but But then i want to go there not your friends (laughs) i think i think it's more fomo because what if that's That's, what what if that's my only social that's a good point and so and this is fun because we have a guy in our group right now, and he's hilarious. He goes to a running group because he loves it. He likes the accountability. He likes the friendships, and I think it's great. He does the drills. He gets there early. He does his warm-up. He does his drills. They all make fun of him. He doesn't care. He's got very thick skin. They're not making fun of him to be mean. Right. But they do make fun of him because that's what people do, like yeah. in a teasing way. There's Chad doing his drills. Oh, there's Mr. Drill Man. You know what I mean? It's me making fun of my friend that did the pigeon every time. <laughs> yeah. So my, so you, you do have to have a little thick skin that way. However, he's not hurting in his knees. He's feeling so much better in his running. And he was laughing because his wife's been very resistant. She doesn't want her husband to coach her. I don't blame her. <laughs> uh, but she watches the, my stuff on the side. And now she's feeling better in her running. And so there is a cultural shift, if you will. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I've been in, in running groups too. Like even this, this is really funny. This morning even I saw a woman running that I've worked with before and another woman was there and later her friend tattled on her and said, you know, she's not ever doing her warm up or anything. <laughs> and she doesn't do any of her drills. And I said, you don't even have to tattle. Yeah. Like I know because the only time she reaches out to talk to me is when she's hurting in her hip. And yeah. I say, have you done your warm up and your drills? And she says, no. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a there's an accountability you have with your group, right? I'm g- it's going to make me get out there. Maybe, like I said, it's my social. I have a, a, another guy that he loves the social aspect yeah. of the running group. And so I don't want him to not have that. I don't want you to not have that. But think about it. If I'm not truly enjoying my run, if I'm suffering, I have a knee pain, any pain, I'm not as fast as I want, whatever it is that my goal is, then make it worth your own time. You know, like you've got to think if I'm... If I'm meeting on Saturdays and getting out there early, it really should be worth my time as well. Right. And so if the whole time you're running, something's hurting you, but you're going to just stick it through because you're out there, it's not really worth your time. Well, and that's what wound up happening is I realized, first off, I was getting up at 5 in the morning for somebody else, you know, and I think we've talked about this before. We go through phases in our life where we care about what other people think, and then we shift to the other side where we don't give a damn. (laughs) But then you get to a point, and I feel like that's when you join the Run RX group, where you it's not that I care what other people think. It's that I care what I think. And I know now that, this we were talking about working out as an example. I know as much as I want to work out three days a week, I oh, and I've got all of your workouts, Valerie, right? I don't. Right. But me saying I'm going to meet you at 630 at the gym gets me there. Now, you still coach me. She still, she puts my workout together, right? She coaches me. She checks me. So I do have a coach that's actually caring about how I'm moving. Mm -hmm. But that's the point, guys, is that when you have a coach that cares about how you're moving, that's going to check in with you, that's going to hold you accountable, you are more likely to do it. And you kind of get back to that kind of that middle ground where am I doing it for somebody? Am I doing it because I'm meeting Valerie? Yes. Yes. But I'm doing it because I choose that this is going to be the best way for me to work out. I, maybe I'm going to meet my friends for the accountability of I'm not going to meet them for coffee unless I've run. You know, so maybe that's your accountability. Or maybe you're going to meet with them and you're going to zone out and do your own thing. And they're going to respect that because that's 
that's what you that's who you are right that's what you uh, that's what you've told them same with that I'm you're, they're gonna respect that you're not gonna drink but do it because you want to do it and because you want to be able to run pain free is that is that kind of a good way of like that that ownership that taking accountability that pendulum switch switch because that's what happened I think that's how many of us you you're not included in this because you don't stop moving a bunch of us stop moving because we decide I'm not gonna do this for anybody else well no I just I mean honestly like I guess my main takeaway is I think people really love having group fitness and I love group fitness yeah so I think that if you have a running group and, they, and they're your friends and who you run with, we're not telling you not to go running with your friends. Right. However, you need to learn to run on your, in, in a sense, with the coach. Because most running groups don't have a coach. It's just right. a group of people meeting to go run. So no one's really watching you run. No one's really helping you with your movement, right? You're just going there to go running. So use, use the coach for your movement, for your own personal movement. Because I think that's where we get stuck is that we love the accountability, but what happens when I cannot be part of the group? That this is where we're getting at. Yeah. If my if, if if it's most people when they show up for running, right, they're feeling pretty good, right? They're and they're all training for some event, that's the fun of it. I'm gonna we're all gonna do this marathon or we're all gonna do this. So there is a huge fun of that. Mm-hmm. So we're really talking to the person that's like, Man, I really wanna do that marathon, but every time I get to mile five or mile six or whatever mile I get to, I have this little twinge in my knee and I don't wanna be the one saying to the group, Can we stop and walk for a minute? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or how do I you know, or maybe you do go to the running group and everyone and be okay with everyone's ahead of me or everyone's behind me or wherever you are in, in the right. group and work on start listening to your running. Right. Like even if you're not in a group and you run by yourself, turn the music off, turn the podcast. Well, that off. brings turn, up, you know, that that's where I think people are missing out on the running itself. Like, why are you running? It goes back to. And that brings up two quick points to that. Why I used to joke when I would do my long runs because I was one of those stupid twenty mile runners, um, is that I wasn't going to have that group when I ran my marathon because right. either they weren't running that marathon, we were they were train we were all training for different ones, or um, they weren't my pace. So I got to the point where it was like, it didn't help me to run my 20 miles with you because you're not going to be with me on the day of the race. So that's one thing you kind of got to think about. Are they going to be with you? And if you're going to be alone and you've trained for now six months, a year with a group, and now you have to be out there alone, that's a real mind thing you have to do with. So I challenge you to think about that if that's something you're doing. But I'm also going to say, this is interesting because you mentioned loving group fitness. The RunRx membership guys, you get one-on-one feedback from Valerie when she does your analysis and when she does your drills. But the Zooms are groups. And we do that on purpose because you will learn from listening to her. If you are actively listening and not trying to like do your practice while she's talking to somebody else, if you actually try to engage in the conversation, you will watch her gauge somebody else on the Zoom and realize, oh, that's what you mean. I thought I was bending my knees, but I wasn't. I was just softening my knees. Or um, or that's what you meant by my head is, is uh, ahead of my shoulders or something. You're going to see it when she corrects somebody else in that group. So we we really believe in group fitness from the standpoint that we don't do the Zooms one-on-one. We do them in right. small groups. Now, I just realized, you know, I'm the only one looking, yeah. right? <laughs> but th- just to be fair... I understand the whole self-conscious aspect of it, too. And I think that's a huge conversation. When you're running with a group, yeah. you're in the group. Like, mm-hmm. everyone's running. So you're like, it's, it's comfort. Yeah. Right? We're all doing the same thing. Or, by the way, being a girl, I don't like women running by themselves in the morning. That's true, so yeah. There's power, <laughs> there's power in numbers that way also. But you are kind of, like, hidden. Yeah. Right? You're in a group. Or if you run by yourself, either way, you're running on your own terms and you're out there. Well, most of us in running have never had someone watch us run and yeah. tell us to move differently. So in the beginning, it's awkward. Yeah. And the fun part of doing the Zooms as a group, because, again, you're not with anybody. You're by yourself. Yeah, you're computer, by yourself right? in your living room. <laughs> but the, the beautiful part is now you can see other people are doing the same exact practice as you are and going through the same exact struggles. Yeah. Because everyone feels awkward. How could they not? Yeah. Right. I'm taking a movement I've, I've thought I was doing right, or at least I thought was a natural movement. And all of a sudden someone's saying to me, move differently. Well, if I've never had a coach or I've never had someone watch me, 
what's the first thing I'm going to be? Defensive, self-conscious, <laughs> right? And so most of guys, by the way, and I totally get it, most people in the running group aren't like, oh, I'm going to go grab me a band and a mat, and I'm going to go hit the parking lot and go by myself and do this stuff. No, of course not. And when you do your group runs and you guys go meet for your group, but isn't it nice to know, like, okay, I have a community and I have a coach, so I know that I'm doing the best things for me. Right. And that way when you do go running, if there's a question or feedback, you come back and you ask your coach. Yeah. Hey, I was feeling this when I was uh, when I was running. Um, and, and maybe you get used to even, I've been, this was something too for me, getting used to videotaping myself, right. videotaping my movement. And I think it, it helped a lot. I, I think what really clicked for me, it was when you actually videotaped yourself doing a pull-up mm -hmm. and you showed it to me and you, your knees were bent and you said, I thought my legs were straight. Right. She, she's, she's like, I, I would have bet money that my legs were straight. And I'm looking at, and we both saw it. Yeah, no, her knees were totally bent. And what, that clicked something for me, guys. So be open to these things that might shift your, your thinking, shift your mindset about running, shift your mindset about movement, about all, everything we're doing. And that's the whole reason for the podcast is that how you do one thing is how you do everything. And if I can shift your mindset and how you run, hopefully I can make you a more positive person. And one last <laughs> thing is do not go to your running group and start trying to coach them. Oh, yeah, Because that please. is the, definitely the first way to get people to. <laughs> well, that goes back to that whole um, I'm not going to drink or, I'm, uh, or I have to eat vegan. You start being the one that comes to the group and start telling them about how sugar and yeah, yeah, their, yeah. their stuff, they're not going to want to be with you, okay? Yeah, and Because right. I'm one of those people that I'm like, I ain't going to ask Katie to come with me because she doesn't like sugar and I really like those cupcakes we had after <laughs> we run. Um, so yeah, you don't want to, I'm not saying to be that person, but I will say that it does happen. You, it you happens. You start it, yeah. feeling better. You want to share <laughs> yeah. it. So I'm going to say it's another podcast we did. Share it by just being what you want to see in the running world and people will notice. Okay, guys, have a good one. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runrx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runrx.fit. 